Okay, we'll get into our next session. We've got Dan Clifford, Managing Director and CEO from Aurelia Metals. Dan's going to be presenting virtually today. Just an introduction on Dan. Dan joined Aurelia as Managing Director and CEO in November 2019. Dan's a mining engineer with more than 25 years experience across the industry. Prior to joining Aurelia, Dan was the Managing Director and CEO of Stanmore Coal. During his tenure, Stanmore saw significant growth in output and profitability at its flagship Isaac Plains mine in Queensland. Additional postings were later at uh, Solid Energy New Zealand and operational positions for Glencore, Anglo-American and BHP. Since joining Aurelia, Dan's been instrumental in growing the business through the acquisition of the Dargs Gold Project, AMI's third operating gold mine. In addition to driving growth, Dan has led the company through a successful 2021 where production guidance was achieved and cost guidance beaten. Looking forward to companies undertaking multiple studies within the asset base which could provide further growth. Please welcome Dan Clifford. Thank you, Marcus, for your general, generous introduction and good morning to all the diggers this year. We could just move uh, straight on to slide three, please. I've been very much looking forward to this opportunity um, for a long time now, as I believe Aurelia is really on the move. Uh, our vision for the company has been put directly on the ground and the execution of our strategy has been uh, aggressive um, and real and happening right now as we speak. Let's move on to slide four, please. Our track record continues. Aurelia, um, started business in late 2008 to 9 with the discovery and in the last 10 years has been an impressive track record across discovery, development, operations at Hera uh, to the acquisition, stunning acquisition, operations and expansions at peak over the last two years and recently the acquisition and operations of Doug's mine in southern New South Wales. All these moves are generating growth and healthy margins within the business. Just move to slide five. I've been recently quoted as saying for Aurelia, it's about delivery in the short term and thinking long. And this morning, that's, I'd like to step through that approach, covering a quick look at FY21. Uh, more importantly and informatively, the assets we have in the group and then moving to look forward with the company. Just move on to slide five, please. Oh, sorry, you're already there. Um, the momentum in the company has been only increased as a result of the last few years. There's been significant steps taken, including standout um, improvement in our health and safety and environmental outcomes. We could just flip back to slide five, please. Um, uh, and community and recently diversity and climate change moves with the broader church of ESG. FY21 guidance in its entirety was met or beaten, and we've added and integrated the DARGS operation into the portfolio. In conjunction with this, continued a large investment into exploration across the recently found Federation deposit, which is part of the Hera complex, Great Cobar and Kairos, which is part of the peak operation, and more recently, DARGS at depth and along strike, and with results on all three fronts. These outcomes drove a roughly 63 to 64% increase in the resources across the business. And with that, with the, com the completion of the Federation scoping study, commencement of early civil works, feasibility study underway for that deposit, pre-feasibility for Great Cobar, there's huge potential for unlocking significant conversion of resources to reserves over FY22. In short, we've given ourselves the opportunity to grow these returns into the future with the last year's efforts. Just moving on to slide seven, please. Looking at our operating portfolio consisting of three operations established in central New South Wales and down into the southern districts of New South Wales, um, including Heat Peak, Terra and the Dargs operation. In combination with these, Aurelia controls significant exploration country, um, predominantly uh, from 
uh, the peak operation down towards Nimaji and the hair operation, but also in front of Dargs. They're highly prospective exploration uh, and they're, they're right in front of all three assets. Um, that, that comment of highly prospective, I think, is um, uh, validated by the recent discovery of the Federation deposit in 2018, and I'll cover that shortly. So move on to slide eight, please. Peak has a long history. A lot of people in the room will be aware of it. Aurelia acquired it in 2018, and it was truly a transformational acquisition for the company. It consists of two undergrounds in the north and the south. High-grade polymetallic ore bodies producing gold dorate, and um, after a processing upgrade in 2018-19, also now produces separate copper, lead and zinc concentrates. We move over to slide nine. Peak will uh, produce in the range of 53 to 58,000 ounces this year and approximately 30,000 ounces of base metal concentrates um, with a production target perspective giving roughly seven years of mine life in front of the mill. Moving to slide 10, please. Combination of the extensions to Kairos and repeat opportunities, mainly gold, copper and lead zinc opportunities, and the Great Cobar deposit really shaping up, um, particularly with copper. The future looks very bright for the peak operation. Moving over to slide 11, please. Uh, the second group, or in fact the original um, in the Aurelia portfolio, uh, is with the Hera Federation complex. And just, just to note, uh, in the top right-hand corner of the photo uh, on this page, you can see the red dot. That's the approximate location of the Federation deposit. It's only 10 kilometres to the south of the existing MIA. This asset's been a classic uh, case of discovery, develop, operate and extend with this recent find. The operation's been running now for seven to eight years successfully and um, produces gold doré and a bulk lead zinc concentrate. Let's move on to slide 12, please. You can see predominantly the asset is at the end of its life. The future for, the, for this area now is with Federation. Um, and you can see gold dropping off as head grades come down as we move towards the end of the mine life and becoming higher proportion of base metals as the ore body closes out. Let's move on to 13. The, the, the real future of Federation, oh sorry, of Hera lies with Federation. The deposits 10 kilometres to the south was discovered in 2019, has now shaped up as a five million tonne resource uh, at approximately an 18% zinc equivalent. For those who like to think in gold equivalencies on a similar calculations, that's about eight grams a tonne across 5.1 million tonnes of resource. It's one of the greatest discoveries in the Cobar Basin in recent two, I've put it to 20 years. Um, and as mentioned, remains open, uh, sorry, remains open in all directions and is in subject to intensive ongoing drilling, as you can see on the slide. Moving to 14, Dargs is the most recent acquisition. We acquired it in December 2020 and through the March quarter, and into the June quarter have now successfully integrated into the Aurelia business and ramped it up to its physicals of full capacity across development, ore production, backfill placement and throughput and recoveries. Head grade, let's move over to 15. Head grade increases with depth. Uh, we have had some headwinds during, certainly through the June quarter of bringing the grade onto the plan, but we're looking roughly at a four year mine life um, from the, the production target, grading about 4.9 grams a tonne uh, across that, that four year period. Moving to 16, please. The real future for DARGS, uh, not only as reserves in the ground for the business and a lowering cost structure, but the asset was completely under drilled um, uh, during our, the period in which we were looking at it. And since then, we've done now roughly 20,000 metres of drilling uh, testing in between loads uh, and will now move to uh, at depth, which you can see on the slide, and to the western portion of the operation. The real thesis through our business is that we'll see, we can see not only a resource extension there, 
but also our capacity increase in the mill as we take it through the studies this year to extend the mine life. Move to 17. The combination of these assets, um, polymetallic ore bodies, uh, multiple ore bodies across singular assets, a number of mills, that it by nature is quite a complex business. But as I put it, not only is it complex, but it's also incredibly valuable. And you can see by the look that the cost structures that our assets are achieving, certainly up to the, the March quarter, the June quarter results from Aramont out yet. Um, but you can see the cost structures against our competitive or against the competitive landscape, yielding strong margins for the business as we move forward. Let's move over to 19, please. The outlook for the business is strong. We're looking this year, um, we've set uh, targets for guidance on a single year basis this year, a 13% increase in gold, approximately 15% increase in base metal productions, production, I should say, across all three assets, but a slightly in, well, an increasing all in sustaining cost structure as the assets move away from uh, uh, a heavy load of growth, develop, uh, growth capital, now moving into sustaining capital as the operations start to mature or, or along the trajectory of growth that we've set them. Moving over to 20. Another way that I like to look at this, and you can see the growth trajectory over the company now with the FY22 estimates built in. Looking at purely on a gold basis, we're more or less equivalent to the FY19 peaks. But as Hera has come off, we've acquired DARGs and that will backfill um, the Hera decline until we bring Federation on. But really importantly, and to the heart of my comment about polymetallic ore bodies being complex, they're also incredibly valuable. And on a gold equivalent basis, we're forecasting a record for the company at just on 200,000 ounces gold equivalent the year. Moving over to 21. So that, that pretty much summarises the asset base, what we're looking at and where we've come from. Really clearly underpinning our moves forward with the company is all about our strategy. It's simple, it's durable and it's very much focused on uh, growth in returns over the next three or four years. I've mentioned a number of times about thinking, uh, delivering in the short term very much thinking in the long term as some of these assets do take significant reinvestment. In parallel with these, sustainability progression across the company, um, you'll see if we move to 22, has been a significant shift in the performance of the business, particularly across injury frequency rates and environmental um, incidents reportable. We've also had significant moves in the governance of the business, and I think with these fundamentals being prioritised first, future and looking forward, particularly across, as I mentioned, that broad church of ESG performance, we have a clear map, and I think our short-term effort, reflective in our results, all sets us, sets us up well for ambitions for the company in the future with regards to our sustainability. Moving over to 23, please. It will be no secret to anyone in the room where the secret lies for assets like this. For us, that, that value all lies in the margin. And that combination of forcing the unit costs down with the mills at full capacity is part of the strategy. And we are adding, uh, on average over the last three years, eight to 15% per annum increases in the throughput of our mills and the, the disciplined prioritisation of the highest value material to those mills. And for example, at peak, we're, we're dealing with six or seven separate ore bodies, um, all of different polymetallic grades, and the prioritisation uh, as early as possible is where the value lies. And then with that investment in the drill bit and the incremental capacity increases the extension of these lives in front of these well-capitalised sites now, we believe is where the short-term uh, returns to shareholders really start to grow. Moving to 24, please. This is, for us, probably the, the um, key to our strategy, and you, you can't just get a group of assets to this level. The company over the last three or four years has really given itself the opportunity 
to enable a portfolio approach, but also create clear tension between the investment in the drill bit and the extensions of the ore bodies in front of those assets, giving great IRR, but also continuing to look at other opportunities in direct competition with those returns from exploration. And we believe that combination is the, is the real success or will be the real success for the company into the future. To move over to 25. And in, in finally, it's all about returns. That's why we're here. Underpinned with a simple strategy, um, looking to move through either organic or inorganic growth in front of these businesses to a four, four or five asset portfolio, primarily focused on uh, improving our cost base and putting more reserves in the ground. And with those life extensions and commodity mix, cycle proofing the business into the long term. So we move to slide 26, please. So in summary, uh, and I'll, I'll move to questions shortly, our investment proposition lies around what we believe is the most valuable combination of the metals. Gold dominant asset base um, with a natural hedge, and you can see that natural hedge giving us advantages or clear, clear, clear advantages in our cost structure as a business. Very flexible polymetallic mills as we've either acquired or upgraded um, the processing capability across those sites and very well planned business um, evidenced by our, our full, our full um, meeting of our commitments with guidance during FY21. And combination of those metals, a significant and growing organic exposure to copper at both Federation but predominantly the Great Cobar operation over the next two to three years. Okay, thank you, Marcus. I'll, it's, I'll hand over to questions. Thanks, Dan. Got a couple of minutes, ladies and gentlemen, for questions. Can I see any questions in the audience for Dan? It's hard for me to see. We have got one uh, question that came through earlier on the live stream, Dan. I'll, I'll kick it off there and please have a think about a question. Put your hand up if you've got anything else to ask. Um, looking ahead, the question came through. Looking ahead, you've got PFS study at Great Cobar. Feasibility study at Hera Foundation, extensional drilling at Dargs. Which which part of all of that excites you and the team the most? Uh, that's a that's a great question. I, I think um, it, it really comes down to looking at it from a short term perspective through to medium and long. The the Federation deposit is an absolute standout for us. Um, I haven't seen grades like that. So we're talking 18 per cent zinc equivalents, 10 kilometres to the south, existing infrastructure, um, well-known mining jurisdiction. That's that's the one that really drives their short-term excitement for the business. Now, added to that, not only are we doing the PFS, or sorry, the feasibility work, we've already pretty much commenced early civil works on that asset um, as we drive towards approval for the decline. So get more and more excited when you start seeing boots on the ground for such a valuable asset. I think that's that's really driven in the short term. Um, there's uh, further drilling to be done on the other two assets, but the combination of all three together is incredibly exciting. It's not every day you to see three operating assets with such growth opportunities and life extensions in front of them. Great, thanks, Dan. Are there any other questions in the audience? Okay. No, we'll leave it there. Thank you very much, Dan. Great. Thank you, everyone.